Hi! Welcome back to Dwindling DS Diva. My name is Amber and today we're going to talk about VSG. So before we get into the information that I found while I was researching the vertical gastric sleeve, we're going to talk about what led me to researching the vertical gastric sleeve. So I was feeling really awful. I was having a lot of problems with my diabetes. I was having to take a lot of medications to control my diabetes. And so I went to my general practitioner and I told her that I wanted to seek further professional help. So I asked her to write me a referral to an endocrinologist that I had found. So I remember when I first went to see the endocrinologist and I met her and I just began to cry and I told her, all the struggles that I was having and how horrible I was feeling and that no matter what I was doing, I was not losing weight and I was gaining weight and that I had even gone to like some pretty extremes in my efforts to try to lose weight. And she explained to me why it was that everything that I was doing just wasn't working. And she told me that we would work together to find a solution and to improve all these issues that I was having. So over the course of a few months, I was taking medicine with her, we were trying different things, and my diabetes was really well controlled, but I was still putting on weight, no matter what I did, no matter what diet plan I was doing, no matter what other medications they were giving me, it just wasn't helping. And so she said to me, have you ever considered bariatric surgery? And I told her that I wasn't ready to have bariatric surgery. I really wanted to do it myself. But at that time, that seed was planted. And over the course of the next few months, while I was still struggling to get a hold of everything and try to lose weight, I began to start thinking about what she had said to me about bariatric surgery more and more. So I began to research bariatric surgery and there is just a plethora of information on social media about VSG. It's the new kid on the block and seems to be very popular on social media. So. I began to research information about it. I was watching other people's journey, seeing how they're doing later on. And from the information that I found about VSG, I'm going to share with you today what I learned. So there are a lot of different options out there for bariatric surgery. Um, the lap band is one that I did not even want to consider. It just did not seem like it was worth it, in my opinion. So if you're looking for information on that, you won't find that here on this channel, but I'm sure there's a lot of information out there that you can find. It's been around for quite some time now. And so VSG stands for the vertical gastric sleeve. And with this surgery, there is some pros and cons and we're going to talk about what it is and how it works and who I feel like it is or isn't good for in my opinion. And so the VSG is done by cutting your stomach into the shape of a banana. I had a banana here earlier that I probably could have used as a reference for size comparison but I ate it for my lunch, so we won't be doing that. <laughs> and um, they give you about 15% of your stomach left when they make that banana shaped tube. And so it works by limiting the amount of food that you're able to ingest into your body. And this form of weight loss is restriction. With this, it also limits the ghrelin hormone, which is the hunger hormone in your body, and you can expect to lose about 60% of your excess body weight, bearing that you do everything that you're supposed to do, follow your diet plan, and be good. So the pros are there's no nutritional deficiencies, you have fewer dietary restrictions, and you can also avoid ever having dumping syndrome. 
is because with this particular type of surgery, the stomach function remains the same because they just remove the excess portion of the stomach and leave everything else intact. So your pylorus valve is the valve at the bottom of your stomach that empties food from the stomach into your intestines. And dumping syndrome is when that food moves too quickly through your system and that can cause you to feel really awful. The initial drop in ghrelin does help your body to not feel hunger, which considerably helps your ability to maintain your food appetite control. And that's only initial though. That hunger be off will be back, which leads me to the cons. If you're considering this surgery, there may be a potential for inadequate weight loss. There may be a potential for weight regain. There's a chance that if you have a lot of weight to lose, you may require additional procedures in order to lose all of that weight. You can have worsening of acid reflux or get acid reflux if you don't already have it. That happens in about 35% of patients. It is not a reversible procedure. So if you have this procedure done, it cannot be undone. Over time, that restriction does lessen though. So your body will be able to eat more food over time. Your body also has an easy time processing carbs sugars, fats. So if you have food addictions, this may be a struggle for you. These pros and cons are really important things to think about when considering having this surgery because it may make a difference on whether this surgery is or isn't the right type of surgery for you. If you have an eating disorder like binge eating, it will take a lot of discipline for you to be able to control that and be successful with this type of surgery. If you have a lot of weight to lose, this may not be the best surgery for you. It may not be as beneficial as some of the other procedures that are out there. You may also require additional surgeries to meet the goals that you have in mind. So it may be better to consider a different surgery that may help you get further to your goal than what this one is capable of doing. If you have GERDs or acid reflux, there are other surgeries that do help with those types of issues. So that may be something that you want to consider as well. If you have food addictions, again, this is going to be a really big struggle for you because you're able to eat those sweet sugary foods that you want. You're able to eat the breads, the pastas, all those carbs. We all know those things taste great, but they're not great for you. And not having that dumping syndrome effect to kind of make you not want to eat those things so that you don't feel that way may be something that you want to consider too if you don't think that you have the self-control and willpower to stay away from those things. After doing all this research, I went back to see my endocrinologist and I told her that I was considering having VSG and that I would like a referral to the bariatric team. Now, my endocrinologist, she did not know what VSG was. And again, I'm gonna consider that because it, like I said before, it's kind of the new kid on the block and that's not really her specialty. So I'm thinking that's why she had never heard of it before. But she told me that with my specific comorbidities that she thought it would be a good idea for me to consider having the Ruin Y. Now, I did not know what that was. I didn't even know that that was the same thing as a gastric bypass. So I now had a bunch more research to do to learn everything that I could about gastric bypass. 
So my endocrinologist in the meantime wrote me a referral to the U of U bariatric team, which is in the same uh, network as her office because I go to the U of U endocrinologist. So as they were doing that referral and I was starting all the paperwork with them, I began to look into the Ruin Y or RNY. And so the next video that I put out, we're gonna discuss everything that I learned about that. So thanks again for watching this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.